9th of January 2014. Gonna get it right. Hold on, the lens is gone. The lens is better. Starting from this end, cleaning up the wiring plugs. Told you to get back on the loom. Then we follow that harness down, rewrapping it as we go, cleaning connectors as we go. Okay. Up there then up to the top and then we'll start to get some tail lights rear tail lights running connect them up to the back so we'll have brake light indicators tail and reverse so we can do a full test on the lighting once that's finished and the rear lights are done we then wrap that loom up out of the way then I'll work on the front headlights once they're done pretty much the looms that's it the looms out there and the dashboard will be put to one side then until the car comes back so you'll be seeing the last of the dash videos shortly probably by the next hours worth of footage so parts one, uh, 58 1 to 4 I'm going to guess that we'll see the end of the dash and a full electrical test done so look forward now to a series of 4 videos dedicated to doing full electrical test on the harness and electrical system including the uh, electric aerial Oh no, sorry, Electric Hour is a separate video. 59, we'll probably see us doing an MP3 or a body shop trip to the body shop. Not sure. That's what the future's got in store. Leave me now to start cleaning these clips up. Not much to really film there. It's simply a case of using a mild vinegar or solution just to clean them connectors and then where appropriate, rewrap. So uh, leave that with me. I'll start that now. All right, every individual connector to be scrubbed and then um, just checked inside, then brush bristles inside with some uh, vinegar, then WD it and then uh, contra lube inside for each connector and then work our way down for each connector. There's quite a few to do, but it won't take long. Um, for, bulk, for bulk scrubbing, I've got this hand brush on a sheet on the floor group them all together in a bunch and scrub them all in one hit for, for the bigger ones there that brought them up dead quick a few minutes and I was away so that's that, that's what I'm on with just cleaning every individual connector and greasing the connectors up till I, till I get to the top there to that fuse box so it shouldn't take too long then I'll rewrap this damaged harness away we go on the wiring harness we're on the wiring harness and here we find evidence of a respray to I spot sapphire blue paint on this grommet so um, the boot's been painted if you ask me well, where this, where's this grommet for? oh back light so it's had some oh yeah this is the back light so that would come to the outside it's had the back end painted also evidence of welding because I burned cable there so someone's been welding in the back there and painting so something's happened to the car and it's in its life bit of history there working my way down still okay vinegar and a cotton bud or mild acid phosphoric or um, diluted hydrochloric if you want just to take the crap out of the ends of the bullet connectors there cotton bud in and twist it round Okay, that, that was really corroded, it's, I can see the copper through now. What I might make sure I do is neutralise the acid. So I just um, wash it with an ivory. You can either use bicarbonate to neutralise it or anything that's uh, alkali. So uh, I've just used some washing powder to, to neutralise that. Stops the acid from carrying on and then I, I blast it out with WD as well. Then contact cleaner and then contra lube on every connector it's just because they're so bad you might not have to do it on yours if you can see copper then just wd it it's just a swampy was so bad that's why i've had to you know really go to town on every connector carrying on very quickly now i'm gonna drop this dirty connector into my magic solution just to give it a clean up i don't want to go on too long working my way up still there just up to this connector here now get that clean Okay, I've reached a tricky customer. Look at this petrol cap. Look at that green corrosion in there. Look at that mucky cap there. Corroded there. This needs some working. This, this needs working, boy. Only one way to get this under seal off this connector. I've tried all sorts. It's clogging up the brushes. 
all sorts, guns, 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 pure thinners baby, we're dipping in, I hope it doesn't damage the plug, it's taking it off though, it's on its way, I'm going to quickly wash this back, wipe it down, I don't want the thinners to attack the, the plastic, it's coming off though, that was horribly tight, covered that one, yeah. just building up some earth, leads now to connect to the metal casings of any item I want to test. So I'm going to build a load of earth hook up points now. Right, first part of the test, I'm going for hazard light test. Front loom okay, up to the back okay. Right hand lights are faceless light, don't worry about that. Left hand one's swampies. Uh, just can't find swampies of a light yet. Okay, so hazards, all right. Side lights are on. Off, on. Uh, reverse light, brake lights. Let's get the brake light switch. Brakes. And reverse, last one. So we've got all the function on the back, function on the front for the hazards. It's down to the front lights now. We'll do the build the front light units up and do this wiring harness here. A nice new indicate uh, registration light, license plate light here. But it's not got a bullet connector on the end, so just spliced in there. I'm going to solder that up. So I've just pushed them in. I've got some heat shrink on the end, so once we've soldered. That join there, just slide the heat sink shrink over. They need to job. Okay, it's fitted. Let's try this reg plate light out now. So we're in there. No problem with that. So working my way from the back, indicators okay, reverse lights okay, side lights okay, brake lights okay, reg plate light okay. Working our way back down the loom, that loom's been recovered. As you can see, it's tidy. We get to these connectors here. These are for the interior light, so now it's time to connect the interior light harness to this and then fit the uh, door switches and test those. That's going to mean cleaning the loom connectors here. So we now start to clean down each loom. There's three all together, I think, three looms, and then the centre one itself. So I'll do that. And let's get the interior light working, and then we are then up back up to the fuse box, working our way back to the front into the hardest part, which is the engine loom. It's not really hard. It's just that there's a lot of wire wrapping to do there. That's fraying off, and generally needs to recover that. And then these plugs here, these wires are a bit faded for my liking. So I'm going to replace that cable there with some bright white cable. Strip back the loom and uh, make some joins in this using heat shrink and solder. I'm also at the same time going to take the opportunity to upgrade the lights. So that it's a four beam main beam. What happens, on at least on my green one, is when you switch to high beam, it turns your dip beam off and then switches to the outer beam but you can get a two-in-one lamp bulb which has a dip and a high beam and then a, you then, then have two lots of high beam because you've done very good power I've got them on my green car and it's a really really good feature um, so you get four main beam headlights in one it means I'm running an extra power feed down into the loom and having a relay to toggle in the extra power but I'm going to do that it's a modification but it's a one that I like and bright lights are important to me so I'm going to do that I'm going to slightly modify the loom and put the extra wires in see these wires are cracked and damaged there look cracking that these are these are perished that's if I bend that now it's going to crack which it does see so that loom's damaged there, but we're going to replace the wire and it's not a problem. We've got brand new uh, wire and plugs, so we can do it. So 
once I've done the interior light, I'll move up to the front, mock up the headlights, how we're going to do it, and then um, we'll have a full test on the front headlights, connect the motor and the heater up, we'll see how much power is coming out of that, double check the wiper motor, and that's the end of the loom. We shall just wire wrap it and finish off. I'll then switch to the radio, which has its own sub loom, which I'm going to make because we've got an MP3 going in. Now the MP3 is mounted behind here on the top of there, the module, so that when you push the glove box down, you've got access to the, the slot for the memory card. You've also got the additional cable running to the steering column stalk, which will have the USB hookup for your USB stick. So you have your hard disk here and then your USB stick there radio there, there's a feed for radio, we're going to need some extra wires we're going to create a loom which looks like a forward loom so it's all going to be built in and neat so I need to start planning the wiring for that um, I think there's about eight, six cables going to the radio and then um, power feed for this unit so we need to be getting extra power so we're going to put a double adapter onto this bullet in coming out to two or three power feeds one to the radio one to the mp3 and then there's an auxiliary power as well we've also got the alarm module we've got to be planning for it's got um, various different alarm systems which won't be covered on these videos for obvious reasons but um, there's extensive alarm work going on okay and also we've got this repair to do down here it's quite extensive there's a lot of damage to that so just a question of cutting and splicing the cables. There we go. Just doing the fan test. Okay, so I've got a motor running now. And I don't know about your heater, but there's definitely something um, different about this one. In my green car, um, Cortinas. It doesn't make it through the ducting. There's a lot of power. Much more, you, much more than you get in the car. So I don't know where it loses it. It's obviously losing it somewhere in these Cortinas. I just don't know where it is. I'd like to get to the bottom of it really. But so that's more more air power out than, than what I get on my face vents. If I go for the face vent setting now, there, that's blowing my hand right out a lot of juice there I don't know if it's because I've um, greased up the fan oiled the fan bearings don't know I'd be interested to try this fan in my green car and see if that's why but there's a lot of power coming out of that so I'm intrigued as to why it is but we're running there anyway so the fans are tested and we know I know that control is working. I know I've tested it before, but not on the actual box. So uh, that looks like the, the wiring loom is all working. starting to cook now now let's go for this stick the cigarette socket in while we're at it may as well heated rear please thank you very much oh I need to check the heated rear live outputs make sure that relay is working forgot about that we'll do a check on the heated rear uh, live output which comes down okay the want to know what your heated rear wire looks like it's that's a heated rear cable Go into the back that plugs in somewhere under here because it's optional there it is already plugged in over there is heated rear so i'll put a lamp on that and just check we've got an output on the heated rear while we're on all looking good i'm just going to check the output for the heated rear now a bulb on that will do the job.